Are you prepared for life's biggest moments like purchasing a home or expecting a child? Willmaker protects your family, property, and assets easily and affordably anytime, anywhere. Swap costly attorney fees for America's number one estate planning software and experience the online ease of creating your living trust, power of attorney, and much more. Willmaker is easy to use, 100% secure, convenient, trusted, legally binding, and you can save money on legal fees. Estate planning on Willmaker is anything but overwhelming. User-friendly guides give you the ability to customize every aspect of your plan and revise documents whenever, wherever. With plans beginning at just $89, Willmaker services save you a lot more time and money than hiring a lawyer. Take the free quiz on willmaker.com, that's W-I-L-L-M-A-K-E-R.com to find the solution that works for you through all of life's exciting changes. You can ensure a secure tomorrow today by using code MINIMALIST10 to get 10% off. Hello and welcome to the Minimalist Moms podcast. I'm Diane, I'm a mother of three, living in Columbus, Ohio. I'm trying to make room in my life for what matters by getting rid of the clutter and living life with purpose. I hope you'll join me on the journey to think more and do with less. Can you spend less, save more, and still lead a life of travel and adventure? Chris Hutchins, acclaimed financial optimizer and host of the Chart Topping podcast, All the Hacks, says that you can, and he has the evidence to back it up. Today, Chris will share actionable advice for how families can live better while spending less, vacation secrets such as how we can make family vacation attainable even on a strict budget, and much more. Chris really blew my mind with some of the hacks that he shared on this episode, so I'm excited for you to hear it. But before we get there, I want to share with you the minimalist resource this week. So this is a bit of an oldie. It came out in 2018. I guess it's not too old, but it's by Catherine Price, How to Break Up with Your Phone. I've been going back through some of my highlighted sections when I originally had read it, and I really like this point that she made and thought that I'd share it with you. So she says, come back to real life. She says, if you use your phone less, you're going to end up with more time. And unless you have some sense of how you want to be spending this reclaimed time, you're likely to feel anxious and possibly a bit depressed, and then you risk sliding right back into your old habits. So she gives you some prompts that you can write down to figure out what you can do with that time. She says, I've always loved to, and then you fill in the blank. I've always wanted to, fill in the blank. When I was a kid, I was fascinated by, if I had more time, I would like to, some activities that I know put me into a flow are, and then lastly, people I would like to spend more time with include. So these are just quick prompts. I mean, even pause right now and write them down so that you can figure out how you would like to spend time if you're trying to create a habit of not being on your phone as much throughout the week. I'm trying to do that right now, especially now that we're getting back into the swing of things with homeschooling. I'm truly not trying to shame anyone for their cell phone usage, but if you're like me, I find myself feeling really frustrated at the end of my day when I have spent the couple of hours between when I put my kids down and when I go to bed on my phone. I'm not saying I'd like to be productive because downtime is so important and that rejuvenating, relaxing period is so important to me, but... There are little moments throughout my day that are honestly stolen moments with my phone. I've said this before, but the stories are still going to be there, at least for 24 hours. And the Instagram posts are still going to be there. And the clickbait headline is typically not nearly as juicy as you are led to believe that it is. So I love Catherine Price's advice. Come back to real life. Think through some of these prompts and jot down what comes to mind. Plan a game night, draw something, write a short story, sign up for a class in the evening. I know how easy it is to reach for the phone when wanting an escape, but my suggestion and my encouragement to you this week as I'm trying to implement in my own life is to just turn to something else first, even if it's for a few minutes and you still end up checking. I will be the first to admit that I click through the E! News Instagram and or people I used to follow on The Bachelor far more than I probably should. So this is my encouragement to you. I'm holding myself accountable this week to find something interesting to do. I really enjoyed doing Sudoku at one point in my life. So I got a book of Sudokus to do 
um, instead of being on my phone in the evening. I love listening to podcasts while I'm trying to do a Sudoku or something like that or listening to a good album. Just trying to break myself of some of these bad habits. So again, if you haven't read the book, it's How to Break Up With Your Phone by Katherine Price and it's a really worthwhile read. And even if you're not fully breaking up with your phone, she provides actionable steps that you can take to break some of those bad habits, as I said. So that's my minimalist resource for you all. As I said, I'm excited for you to hear this interview with Chris Hutchins. I had intended just to talk about vacation hacks, but he provided me so much more. So I just ended up calling this episode All the Hacks because there are so many little tips woven throughout the episode that anyone, any family could benefit from. So let's get into it. Here's my episode with Chris Hutchins. Chris, thanks for joining me today on the Minimalist Moms podcast. Thank you for having me. Despite not being a mom, I've got two kids, so hopefully I can qualify for a lot of these conversations. Yes. I wanted to get more dads on this year, and I think you're maybe the fifth or sixth, but I just like to see minimalism and or intentional living simplicity from you guys' point of view. I still haven't had my husband on. I need to get my husband on the show. I have a podcast and I did my first episode with my wife. We co-hosted an episode with another couple talking about relationships. Oh. Um, it was about, they wrote this book called the 8080 marriage, which is like a new framework for not bickering and arguing and fighting about all these pedantic things in your relationship. And so we did the episode together and it was like so much fun and bonus. It gave my wife a little bit of extra appreciation for the art of podcasting. Cause it's so easy for someone to always go, Oh, it's so easy. You just sit and talk. And after she was like, Oh, it's like, it's harder than I thought. And I was like, Oh, thank you. I was incredibly stiff when I first took over the podcast. I used to have a co-host, uh, I think four and a half years ago, and she was a lot more buttoned up than I was. I felt like I was always the one that kind of was humorous, but then when she left, I was like, okay, I have to be this interviewer. I have to ask the right questions. But then I was so nervous that I just couldn't, I just couldn't keep it together. Like I know myself listening back. I'm like, Oh, you were just a mess, but being eloquent, not using filler, um, like all these filler words that we typically use, that is something that grows over time and, or just getting to the point is something that takes time for sure. Yes. And if not, then you just have to edit it out. And yeah. Hope, hope yeah. no one notices. Yeah, it. absolutely. All right. So yes, you do have a podcast. Tell me your name. We didn't even get there yet. <laughs> Introduce yourself to the listeners and we'll get into our topic. Sure. I'm Chris Hutchins. I'm like one of those crazy life hackers that has a spreadsheet for everything that you know really tries to optimize my life with the entire goal of just living a more intentional, happy life, doing the things that add the most value to my life, my family's life, my children's lives. Um, and so that comes in a lot of perspectives. So the, I would say the show I run is called All the Hacks. And my kind of attitude is like, I care a lot about a few things. Travel is really important to our family. So about a third of the show is helping people figure out how to travel for less, um, you know, optimize their points and their miles to travel for free. Another third of the show is about personal finance. So I used to run a financial planning firm. I've been a financial advisor. Uh, it's about helping people think about saving and investing for the future and building their wealth. And then the rest is just everything else in life. I mentioned relationships, so, you know, relationships, uh, negotiating at work, happiness. Uh, I did an episode a couple of weeks ago about how to throw a really easy cocktail party to help build relationships and why it's so much better than throwing dinner parties. So, you know, the, the other category has a lot of wide ranging topics, health, performance, sports, like everything, but all with the idea that it's for someone who wants to live a happier intentional life and try to figure out ways they could optimize their lives to be more in line with what they want. I feel like if you lived closer, I would try and make friends with you and your wife because my husband and you seem to be the same person. He <laughs> lives by the spreadsheet and we have this beer tasting every Christmas and we invite a couple of couples and every person brings two holiday beers and we all go around, we have a sample and then we vote on our favorite beer. Like we give it a rating and he puts it into the spreadsheet. And at the end of the night, we figure out what one the evening, but oh. it's all but done by spreadsheet. He compares averages from last year. Like that is right up his alley. At a minimum, I just am like, can I can I borrow a copy of the spreadsheet? I want to oh, see yeah. what, the best, what are the best beers? Uh, you know, that would yeah. sound like a great thing to know. It's different every year. They just keep making companies keep making holiday beers. So yeah. 
Anyways. All right. We're getting off topic. I love that you are into intentional living and how to live your, your, your best life, which is kind of overused, but we're going to go with it. I want to know some advice that you may have for parents that we can live better lives while spending less. That's a huge topic that you talk about on your podcast. And we all obviously want to live the best life that we can, but that can be very expensive. So what are some of your tips that we can spend less and elevate our lifestyle, I guess? Yeah, I want to, I was, first off, it's sometimes that's in conflict. So it's, it's, you know, it's, it's just a, good to accept that. Also, I think it's important to know that the message I try to share is not let's find the way to cut every single dollar of our budget and let's not spend any money and let's wash our tin foil and build our rakes from sticks in the backyard. Uh, I think that if there's something you really love and value, whether that's travel or eating organic food, I'm all for spending on those things. It's just find the things in your life that you don't care about as passionately and cut back there. Um, for me, you know, I don't care whether a lot of the things that we own are new or used. So, you know, I started as soon as we knew we were expecting our first daughter, like perusing Facebook Marketplace, Mercari, Craigslist, next door, And we started like filling out all the things we needed from buy nothing groups, from uh, all those other places to the point that we got to our baby shower the first time we we're like um well we don't really need that much stuff because we managed to find all of it and i almost was like well i don't want you to buy me this thing at retail price because like i can go get it for a lot less so for us that was really important um you know i also that means getting rid of stuff so when we get something new we try to get rid of stuff um you know i I don't think you necessarily have to sell everything to make a little bit of extra money there are people that need things and sometimes the hassle of selling it is is not worth it i love getting deals so when I'm shopping for anything online, look, we probably all know that there are sites that you can find coupons for, but I'll try to take it to the next level. One of my favorite hacks is always if there's a live chat on a site that you're buying something from, message them and ask them if you can get, if there's any better deals. Um, I'd say like 50% of the time I end up getting a co coupon code or a discount that's better than anything I'd already found. Oh. You know, I'll, I'll go online and search for coupons and there are sites that sell them. So there, there's a site that I think it's like save deals.com that sells like crate and barrel coupons and home Depot coupons. So anytime I'm like about to make a big purchase, I'm not just looking for the discount codes, but I'm willing to spend three or $4 to buy a crate and barrel 20% off coupon to buy the couch. That's, you know, you you're seeing on video is behind us. That was a, a coupon couch. Um, you know, buying discard. There's websites where people have like, oh, I got a disc gift card. I don't need it. I'm willing to sell it at a discount because I would rather have cash. Great. If I'm going to buy something from Bed Bath & Beyond and I can go buy a Bed Bath & Beyond gift card for 20% off because someone doesn't want it, I'll do that. So it's less about trying to sacrifice and more about finding a way to not sacrifice and get more. Um, and you know, we could probably spend hours going down. Okay. You should go inventory your subscriptions and figure out, is there something you're paying for each month that you actually don't care about? If you live in a state where, or a county where you can change your energy bill to be not just flat rate, but off peak and peak hours and kind of time when you do laundry and wash the dishes and use a lot of your electricity so that it's at the off peak hours, we our energy bills like 20% less because we do that. So, but I don't want to like turn off the power. I just, you know, changing how we operate. So my whole thing is trying to find ways to shift the way you operate so you can live the same life or even elevate it. Like I always say, upgrade your life, your money, your travel. Before we get, we're going to talk about vacation. I'm sure it's like, I don't want to not take the vacation. I don't want to go stay at the roadside rundown motel. Like maybe I'm going to figure out how to optimize the way I spend money on my credit cards or search for flights so that I can actually take a better vacation at the same price or maybe less. Oh my word. You just kind of blew my mind. <laughs> so, and again, I, I think my husband, I need him to start listening to your podcast because this is right up his alley, everything you're sharing with me, but you're right. I think that everyone's values or what they want to spend their money on. We're not into watching TV. We don't really care about television movies. So we have a TV from 10 years ago when we met because we don't really watch it. 
we do love to go travel and we love to see the world. So we went to Alaska last year, but we are not upgrading these things. You just have to hone your focus on what you want. You have to, and I mean, that is up to you. And it, I don't like social media for the fact that people are like, oh, this person's going and doing this, but it's like, maybe you don't see what they're giving up to go do these things. And then some people are just bougie and are in a ton of debt. And so that's not great either. Yeah. I always ask people, I say, Hey, think about a recent post you made online and think about the most recent financial struggle you've had or frustration. And I'm pretty sure that those weren't the same thing, right? Like you weren't out there. Oh, we were fr- struggling to pay this medical bill. Oh, and that's what we posted on, on Instagram or on Facebook that week. No, you probably posted some great picture of your family out at the park. That's what everyone's doing. And like, not, you know, money's the number one cause of stress, the number one cause of divorce in the country. So like, it's okay that money's hard and money's stressful and you haven't figured it out. Most people haven't. And th- that's my one gripe with social media is it looks like everyone's figured it out. But if you like just peel it back, you'll find that that's not the case. And I think some of the most powerful financial lessons that I've had have come from pushing the bounds on what's normal to talk about with friends and kind of challenging the dinner conversation to just ask questions. You don't need someone to show you the balance in their bank account. Be like, Hey, have you guys ever like had frustrating struggles with money? Maybe be vulnerable, share something with yours and you'll instantly unlock this kind of conversation with some people, maybe not all where you start to realize that everyone's in a similar situation and it, it just makes it easier for you to not feel like you're trying to keep up with the Joneses if you realize that all of these Joneses are actually like, just like you. What if I told you there was a new product out there that can tackle your negative impact on our climate just by using it once a day? There is. And believe it or not, it's actually a credit card. I was so excited to discover Aspiration Zero credit card. So many of us care about the environment, we care about the climate, and we want to know what we can do to have a daily effect. But it can be daunting. That's why I love this credit card. And I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Aspiration Zero is the first credit card that fights climate change by planting trees with every swipe. The way it works is simple. With an Aspiration Zero credit card, you plant two trees with every purchase you make, and two trees soak up about the same amount of carbon dioxide from the air as the average American puts out every day. And along with the reward of knowing that you've turned buying a latte into a way that you can do your part to save the planet, you get the other kind of green reward too. Cash. Unlimited 1% cash back on all your monthly purchases when you hit carbon zero for the month. Thanks to people like you, Aspirations made a huge impact. They've already planted 75 million trees. Make your dollars make a difference. Apply for the Aspiration Zero credit card today and earn a $300 welcome bonus after spending $3,000 in the first 90 days. Apply right now at aspiration.com slash minimalist to go carbon neutral effortlessly and earn a $300 bonus. Go to aspiration.com slash minimalist. The Aspiration Zero MasterCard is issued by Beneficial State Bank, pursuant to license by MasterCard International Incorporated. Good credit required. Terms and conditions apply. Millions of Americans experience thinning hair. It's more than common. It's actually normal, but it's not openly talked about, especially, especially amongst women. Going through it can feel lonely and frustrating. If you're among one of the 30 million women that are impacted by weekend or thinning hair, know you're not alone and that there's a solution you can trust to deliver results. I want to tell you about Nutrafol. It's the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement. It's clinically shown to improve your hair growth, thickness, and visible scalp coverage. It supports healthy hair growth from within by targeting the five root causes of thinning, which are stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, and metabolism through whole body health. In a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after six months. And 3,000 plus top doctors and stylists recommend Nutrafol as an effective and high quality solution for healthier hair. Who doesn't want that? It's a simple addition to your daily routine. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support my show by going to Nutrafol.com and entering the promo code MINIMALIST to save $15 off your first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere, and it is only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Plus, free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com. Promo code MINIMALIST. Hey parents of young babies, is there a child with food allergies in your family? Does your child have a friend or a classmate with food allergies? Or 
Do you know of someone close to you that has food allergies? If the answer to any of these questions is yes, then you know how scary, limiting, and anxiety-inducing it can be to have to carry an EpiPen with you at all times or constantly just be on high alert when dining out, reading food labels, sending your kids to school, all of the things. Imagine a world without food allergies, where all foods are considered safe to eat for anyone, where there aren't nut-free schools or separate allergy-free tables at lunch. That's what we call food freedom. Evidence-based research, USDA guidelines, pediatricians, and allergists all agree. Feeding small amounts of common food allergens like peanut, eggs, and milk daily for six months or more, starting at four months, is important for all babies to give them the best chance at a future of food freedom. That's why I'm happy to tell you about Ready Set Food. Ready Set Food was developed by an allergist and mom of two to make it easy, safe, and convenient to regularly feed babies low doses of the most common food allergens starting right from the bottle. Ready Set Food is a gentle, guided system of products that takes the mess and stress out of introducing allergens. Head over to readysetfood.com slash minimalist and use code minimalist for 30% off your first order of Ready Set Food and get your child started on the path to food freedom today. So let's talk about some of your family vacation secrets that you might have. If you are planning a vacation first next year, what are just some easy ways that you have saved money and that we can do the same? Yeah, so I'm going to break into two categories, right? If you're trying to plan a trip, there's two ways to kind of think about it. One is I'm going to try to play the points and miles game and make the trip cost nothing or a lot less, or that's not my style. Maybe I have a cash back credit card. I'm just going to focus on the trip being as cheap as possible. Um, and you can kind of combine them both because we don't all have enough points to do everything. So when it, I'll start with for anyone, um, it, you know, my favorite way to search for flights is Google flights. Um, I think it is the best flight search tool out there because you can leave the destination empty. You can search from multiple airports. So in the Bay Area, there's three airports I can drive to within an hour. So I'm willing to fly out of any of them if it saves money. So when I'm searching for a vacation, I can say, type in all the three from airports and leave the destination empty and just search for a trip in September or March and then look at a map and see on the map where it's cheap to go to. And you can even apply a lot of the filters. So if you have kids, which I think pretty much everyone here does, like I'm not interested in the three-stop flight. (laughs) Like if you live in a major city, you might say, I'm not even interested in one stop. If you don't, you know, you might have accepted that you're gonna need to take a, a, a change of planes once, but you're only willing to do it once. You can say, you know, I only want flights that are under this price. And then you just see on the map, oh, Mm-hmm. Well, we weren't really sure where we wanted to go, but now that there's it's it's a hundred dollars round trip for us to take a family vacation to Salt Lake City or to Phoenix, like there's probably something amazing you can find anywhere you go. Uh, yeah. A fun lesson that I have is so many people around the world travel to San Francisco to go on vacation. So I try to remind myself, like maybe if we're trying to cut costs on our next trip, let's just do something here. Like millions of people every year are coming to where we live. There has to be a vacation we can create here um, if we're trying to save on this trip. But if we're trying to go somewhere, Google Flights is great. If you know where you want to go, you can say, hey, we're going from San Francisco. We're going to Denver. Let me look at the calendar. And you can look at the whole year very easily and see on any day, what day is the cheapest to fly. And you, and The thing that I think most sites don't let you do is you can apply those filters and say, well, but I only want to see the prices on nonstop flights or, but I only want to see this airline or I refuse to fly Spirit Airlines. Like you can make all those requirements and then see what the best deals are. So that's one. Um, I'll share just some fun little ones that I think will give everyone a little flavor. Obviously, if you, we could put in the show notes, but like I have probably 10, 15 episodes on travel, everything from inspiration to points and miles. But a few cool ones, if you're looking to go somewhere internationally, um, a lot of times the way we think about searching for an international flight is we go, I want to go from here to here, which makes sense because that's like how our brains work. But if you're going to some place that's not a major city, um, this is became a notable thing from Scott Kais, who uh, has a website called Scott's Cheap Flights. It's, he calls it the Greek island trick, but it's, there are only a few airlines that fly to the islands of Greece. 
And this is also true about the small town in any country or a major town in small countries. So if you look from your home airport to an island in Greece or a small town in Italy, you're only going to see the flights on airlines who fly between both of those places. I can tell you that in Greece, like a flight from Athens to an island might be $30. But the airline that flies that route probably doesn't fly to the United States. So you're often better if you're flying to a smaller place, looking for your flights to the main city. So looking from, you know, Columbus, Ohio to Athens, not to the island or to Rome instead of the small town in Italy or to Bangkok instead of whatever island you want to go to in Thailand, because the flights to the major cities are on lots of airlines, but the small cities aren't. So and then just buy that flight separately, leave okay. enough time so you can collect your bags and all that, or maybe even spend a couple days in the main city getting, you know, getting your bearings oriented and all that. But you can save a ton. Like I've seen flights to an island. We went to Greece. The flights to the island were like a few thousand dollars and the flights to Athens were like almost under like $900. Mm -hmm. And then we just added $30. So the, the flights were cut in half yeah. by not trying to do that. You know, we've graduated to this point where we're now not sure we actually want to stay in hotels because what do you want one hotel room with all four of us? It can be a lot. Do you want two rooms? It's hard to get adjoining rooms. So we're often looking at renting an Airbnb or a VRBO. And this is, I would say like 20% of the time maybe works in the U S but like 50% internationally works really well in Mexico. Take the image on Airbnb or VRBO, save it to your computer, the main image for the property and then go to Google image search, upload the image and look online for every website that has that image. And sometimes you'll find another rental site that doesn't charge as big of a commission as Airbnb, or maybe you'll get lucky and find the owner of the property who's renting their home and they just have their own website and they're not charging any commission. And I've seen it be anywhere from 10 to 30% less expensive, uh, depending where you book the exact same place. So not everyone has their home on another website or a cheaper website, yeah. but, it, but internationally, a lot of times the site that caters towards Americans looking to book a house in Mexico is yeah. not as cheap as the site that might cater towards people who live in Mexico looking to book a home. And so, you know, if you can find that site, it's hard. You might not know what to search for, but Google lets you search by picture. And like, usually the owner of the house is using the same picture on every site they publish their house on. So that's one. My favorite hack if you're staying in a hotel is, and this, this isn't going to save you money, sorry, but it is going to get you a better experience without having to spend more is book the hotel directly with the hotel company. Don't book it at Orbitz or Expedia. Call the hotel, look on their website, try to find an email for the hotel. If you can't find one, call and just say, hey, is there an email for the front desk or the manager? Send an email and say, hey, I booked my hotel. Here's my confirmation. We're really excited to stay with you. Um, you know, if there's anything we need to know, let me know. Excited. And then follow up three days before and say, just want to let you know, we're still coming. We're really excited. If you're celebrating an anniversary, a birthday, let them know. And that's it. I would say 50% of the time, if you're at the kind of hotel that has a restaurant where they do room service that has nicer rooms than the one you booked, you will get an upgrade or maybe a bottle of champagne or maybe some amenity free breakfast. I've seen so many hundreds of emails from listeners from my show that have tried this all the way to one couple got their pillow. They monog the hotel monogrammed their initials on their pillow, which for me, I'd rather take the champagne or something, but you know, the thought that counts, but hotels are in the hospitality game. And when you book on a third party site, they don't always get to build a relationship with you because in many cases, they don't even know who you are until you check in. Uh, and so if you book directly with them, they still feel like, oh, we have a chance to build some loyalty to our brand, our hotel, because we have a direct relationship with you and they're willing to go above and beyond to do that. I would prefer this champagne as well. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, I mean, it's cool. Oh, the hotel monogram, my pillows, but I'm not going to use a pillow with a bunch of stitching on it. Like I just want a basic pillow. Sheet. Yeah. Wow. Gosh. So good. Do you have okay, one more, one more. Yeah. Okay. One more. What's your, yeah what's your last uh, so I just did this long episode, not long, but it was one hour all about rental cars. And so if you have to rent, a, the crazy thing is rental cars pre-pandemic were like an afterthought. You're like, I'm going to book a trip. And then once we book it all, I'm going to rent the car. Well, now, because what happened during COVID, the rental car companies didn't need to rent their cars. They sold them thinking they could buy them back. And they couldn't because of all these chip shortages and car inventory. And so rental cars are a lot more expensive. 
Uh, it is definitely worth looking at rental cars in advance. Sometimes, you know, in the Bay Area, there's three airports. If you were flying here, it could be $20 per person more to fly to one airport, but you could save $100 a day on the rental car. So I would, I would be looking at rental cars in advance. That's one. Um, the guy I interviewed started this company, Auto Slash, where you can search for a rental car on their website. The really cool thing they do is all of these programs offer discounts. If you're just a United Mileage Plus member, they have a discount with some airline. If you're a member of Costco or AARP, they have discounts. With their site, they'll search all the discounts out there. They collect all the promo codes that all the rental car companies post online, on social media. They search all of them to find you the best deal. And then you book with them. You know, They get a cut from the rental car company, so you're not paying them any extra fees. And then they'll just keep looking every day if the prices have dropped. And I think the guy said on average, they save customers 30% because rental car prices change all the time. And so even if you've already booked a rental car, you can upload your reservation there and they'll just keep looking. And if they find a way to save you money, they'll email you. And if not, they won't. So I kind of didn't believe it because I'm kind of a nerd and like, I know how to do all these searches. So for our Hawaii trip, I was like, let's see if they, that it can really beat what I got. And for a week rental, we saved $200. And I was like, okay, this is where I'm searching for rental cars. Wow. Yeah. That's um, my parents were going to go to Alaska this September and they ended up totally canceling the trip because the rental cars were so expensive. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Well, do you have any other, I mean, you gave us a lot, so I feel like we can, we can end it there if you want to, but did you have any other tips that are budget friendly for people that are really on a strict budget? You did mention having more of a staycation, which I'm all about that as well. Yeah. I'm all about the staycation, but the thing I didn't, we didn't talk about yet is I'm a big fan, assuming that you can pay off your credit cards each month, uh-huh. of taking advantage of the fact that there are financial institutions that are willing to give you massive like welcome bonuses of points or dollars to oh. open up a card with their institution. For most people opening up a new card, like the benefits to your credit score often outweigh the cost. So you might get a few points reduced by uh, the fact that you open a new card, but because you have more credit available to you, you know, it looks less risky as long as you aren't spending twice as much money. So it actually can help your credit score. Um, You know, there's a lot of nuance to that. I won't go into it, but I am a huge fan when there's a card that it wants to give me 80,000, a hundred thousand points to sign up, which when used, depending on how you use it could be anywhere from like 800 to $2,000 for free. And in a lot of the cases, you know, right now, um, You know, I'll just say go to all the hacks.com slash cards, and there's a list of kind of my top ones right now. But like this city premier card is offering 80,000 points to new people that can spend $4,000 in three months, but you can spend that on your regular stuff. You don't need to go, you know, spend something else, just start using that card. You know, that card, for example, earns three points on groceries, three points on gas, uh, three points on hotels and airfare. So, like, it's a great beginner card. But 80,000 points can, at a very minimum, get you $800 off your next trip. Um, And so I know a lot of people that have pretty successfully over the course of a year said, look, we want to take a trip next year. This is where we want to go. Let's every, you know, three, six months, me or my partner might open up a new card that has a really big bonus. And a year from now, maybe we've saved up two, three, 400,000 points, which might pay for your entire vacation. Um, my neighbors uh, just booked round trip tickets from San Francisco to Portugal for le- less points than they got from opening one card with one sign up bonus. Um, so I, I think they didn't go with kids. So maybe you need to yeah. do two, two with kids. You need, you need twice as much. But I think that taking advantage of that, both the sign up bonuses and just optimizing where you spend your money. If you spend all your money on groceries and you know you have a travel credit card that pays you everything on travel, well, maybe there's a better card to take advantage of how you spend your money. And I think sometimes our pre-parenting lives are very different than our post-parenting lives. Pre-parenting, I was like, oh, it's all about going out to eat and going on trips. So I had you know, a Chase Roof Sapphire card that earns points on travel and dining. Now we spend a lot on groceries, you know, like, which is like a huge, huge thing. We're not going out as much. And so I've kind of readapted that. And my one fun hack there is if you spend a lot on groceries, which I imagine many people here are, Mm -hmm. and you have a card like the city um, premier card or the Amex gold card, which both earn a lot of bonus points on groceries. There is my favorite trick is 
that that means that you're not earning points on other categories, but the grocery store sells gift cards to so many places. Mm -hmm. So if I have a home improvement project that I need a bunch of stuff from Home Depot, I'm not using my credit card at Home Depot. I'm using my credit card at the grocery store. I'm Mm -hmm. buying Home Depot gift cards. I'm getting my three or four points per dollar on Home Depot gift cards. And then I'm going to Home Depot with those gift cards. So I'm always trying to make sure I'm getting you know, enough points or cash back if that's your thing to just make sure that uh, I'm maximizing the chance that on our next trip, I've saved up enough points that the trip is free. And, you know, there's no way that in a handful of minutes, we're going to go into the nuance of all that. So I would say if anyone listening has questions or wants to go deeper, I've got a bunch of episodes on points and miles and some Q&A episodes, but I also love getting questions. So shoot me an email, send me a DM on social media. Um, I'm happy to try to help out uh, or at least point you to the right resource. Yeah, that was actually, this is so awesome, by the way, but where can listeners find you if they want to connect with you online? Yeah, so allthehacks.com is the show. Um, you could go find all of our, you're listening to podcasts now, just search all the hacks and whatever app you're, you have open on your phone right now. Um, we also have a newsletter where I try to summarize a lot of what I've learned about a topic every week. You can go look at the archive, um, all the hacks.com slash email. I'm just Chris Hutchins on Instagram, Hutchins on Twitter. I know I wish I had the same on both. It would make <laughs> life easier. Um, and then my email is just Chris at all the hacks.com. So, um, check out the show, send me any questions. Uh, I'd love to hear from anyone here and let me know what you think. I hope you guys, I hope everyone listening gets to go on a trip and feels like they've either, if, if someone, if everyone has either saved some money or done something for less money, I will be happy. And that's kind of, you know, I might not be the most minimalist person in real life, but when it comes to spending money, I like to spend a minimal amount without sacrificing any of the vacation. I'm, I'm right there with you. I feel like my husband and I are going to end up in your DMs asking you questions about our next trip. <laughs> that makes um, me happy. Yeah. Well, okay. I always do at the very end of my show, two quick fire questions. And the first one is what has been a beneficial resource to you that you'd like to share with the listeners? The resource I'll share. I mean, first off, I create resources. So all the hacks for sure. But um, a book that I think everyone would on this listening to this would love is called Happy Money. Um, It's by Elizabeth Dunn and Michael Norton. And it's all about the five ways that you can spend money in your life to actually increase your happiness. And I think it's a fantastic read. It's a quick read. I think everyone would enjoy reading it. And what is something that you can't stop talking about? Okay, this one's gonna sound a little crazy, but the New Yorker did this article about a ridiculous egg machine. And I told my wife who loves uh, hard and medium boiled eggs, I was like, we gotta get this thing. It's like $17, it's called the Dash Rapid Egg Cooker. And you throw two eggs in, pour a little water, press a button and out comes like, perfectly cooked, medium, soft, hard boiled eggs, or you can even poach an egg in it. And it's like, it's so ridiculous to have this little contraption on your counter, but it is so easy to make eggs that I don't know. It's been a game changer in our house. I don't even love eggs. I get so much satisfaction out of like delivering my wife, these like restaurant quality eggs every morning. Um, (laughs) So that is something I can't stop talking about. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining me today on the show. Again, this was so full of information and I'm always down for those types of episodes. So I really appreciate you joining me. Thank you for having me. What did you think of the episode? If you enjoyed this conversation, I want to encourage you to leave a rating and review if you haven't done so yet. Leaving a rating and review is the best way you can help this podcast continue to succeed and grow. Again, thank you to everyone who supports the Minimalist Moms by listening, leaving those rating and reviews, or following along on social media at Minimalist Moms Podcast. As always, I invite you to keep the conversation going at minimalistmomspodcast.com, and there you can find links to the Instagram account, my Facebook page, and where you can find me all around the web. Thank you for joining up on this journey. I wish you a lovely week as you think more and do with less.